we're going to talk about 2D vectors again, and this time we're going to start bringing in those angle measurements. So notice here, SOCATOA. So what if we're given the resultant, but we need to know what the sides are? So the only way to figure that out is to use SOCATOA. So SOCATOA, again, is sine, cosine, and tangent, where SO means sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Ka is for cosine, where cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan, or toa, is for tangent, which is opposite over adjacent. Uh, the way we figure out which is opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse is based on the right triangle. If our angle is here, then the opposite side is the side that the angle opens to. It's the one opposite where the angle is. The adjacent, the word adjacent means beside. An adjacent house in your neighborhood is the one beside you, your next door neighbor. So adjacent is the one beside the angle. And yes, there are two sides beside the angle. The other one is specifically called the hypotenuse, where the hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. So opposite the right angle and is always the longest leg of the triangle. So let's see how we would work a problem dealing with Sokotoa. So it says here, a baseball is thrown with a velocity of 5 meters per second at a 40 degree angle. What is the upward and forward velocities? The first thing we would need to do is draw this as a triangle. So let's draw a line. This is the velocity at the angle. So let's go ahead and draw a triangle here. There we go. So the 40 degree angle is going to be measured from the ground. So the 40 will go here. And in fact, in all of the problems for the most part, I'm pretty sure all of them, this bottom angle, if you draw a right angle, the bottom angle is going to be the one for your angle measurement. So 40 goes here. This velocity of 5 meters per second is at the angle. So this is your hypotenuse. And then you're looking for the upward velocity, which is going to be here. So it's V. And because up and down on a graph is the y-axis, we're going to call this VY. Upward is VY. And then the forward velocity is the one going outward, not upward, but outward. And this is going to be V. X because this would be your X axis. So now let's solve for each of these individually. So we're finding the upward velocity first. Keep my colors consistent. We're looking for VY. So since our angle is here, this side is opposite the angle. So we have opposite and we have hypotenuse. And if we go back to so, ka, Toa. Opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So sine of the 40 degree angle is equal to the opposite side, which is Vy, over the hypotenuse, which is 5. So an important note here, we put it in red, calculators must be in degrees for physics. If you need help figuring out how to do that, please feel free to ask me. All right, so let's keep working. So we want to get Vy by itself. Vy divided by 5 means we need to multiply both sides by 5. And so we get 5 times sine of 40 degrees equals Vy. And so you can literally plug it just like this into your calculator, 5 times sine of 40 degrees. And so we get an upward velocity 
of 3.214 meters per second. This is in meters per second, so this is in meters per second. Triangles have where all of the sides have exactly the same angle or same unit. So all sides have the same unit. It's going to become very important when we get to projectiles. All same unit. All right, so let's find the forward velocity. So for the forward velocity, we're looking for Vx. So this is your adjacent. It's the one next to it. And again, we have the hypotenuse. And so, adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine ka. So, cosine of 40 degrees equals A, the adjacent, which is Vx, over the hypotenuse, which is 5. And so, again, we're going to multiply both sides by 5. And so we get 5 times cosine of 40 degrees. Plug that into your calculator, and you get 3.83 meters per second. Again, meters per second, meters per second. All right, let's do another example. So here we've got our plane again. So if you've been watching the previous videos, then you know we've been using a plane a lot. So we have a plane encounters a wind that blows towards the east. The plane flies at an angle of 30 degrees at a speed of 150 meters per second. So what is the velocity of the plane if the plane is going north? And what is the velocity of the wind if the wind is going east? All right, so let's draw our triangle. So we've got the plane going northeast. We need our other sides. There we go. So the plane with the wind is 150 meters per second. The angle measurement is going to be this bottom angle again, 30 degrees. And then we're looking for the Vn, so the northern velocity. And we're looking for the Ve, which is the eastern velocity. So let's find the northern one first. This is the side opposite. So it's opposite hypotenuse, which again means sine. So sine of 30 degrees equals Vn over 150. So we're going to multiply by 150, both sides. And so we get a Vn, just going to do this quickly. So 150 times sine of 30 gives you 75 meters per second. Then to do our VE, this is the adjacent sign, so we'll use cosine of 30 equals VE over 150. So we're going to multiply by 150 on both sides, and so we get a VE of 129 0.9 meters per second. Now you could have also used Pythagorean theorem as well because you have the hypotenuse and you have one of the legs and so you could solve for the other leg. So just to prove that, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And so we'd have this one which is 75. We would be solving for b squared which would be ve and then we have the hypotenuse which is 150. And if you do this math, you get exactly the same answer. All right, so now you travel three kilometers east and five kilometers north. All right, so three kilometers east and five kilometers north. So let's go ahead and draw this. So three kilometers east. And then five kilometers north. So our resultant is from here to here. 
and this is what we're looking for. Notice here it says, what is your displacement for the path, magnitude, and direction? This is your magnitude. The direction is this angle. The angle is the direction. So we're looking for the hypotenuse and the angle. So first, let's find the hypotenuse. So we get two sides of the triangle. There's our right. We're looking for the long side. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we get 5 squared plus 3 squared equals c squared. 25 plus 9 is c squared. And so we get 34 equals c squared. Now to solve for this, take the square root of both sides. And we get our C value of 5.831 kilometers. Kilometers, kilometers, kilometers. So now we have all three sides. So let's put that one in there. So to solve for this angle, we can use any of the three functions, sine, cosine, or tangent. Because we're given these two, your most accurate answer will be using these two. So that would be your opposite side and your adjacent side. So opposite and adjacent is TOA. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So tangent of some angle, so we'll just put an X, equals the opposite, just 5, over the adjacent, which is 3. Again, always make sure you use the two sides you're given to find these angle measurements. So tangent of X is equal to 1.66667, so it's repeating sixes. And now we've got to figure out how we're going to get this x by itself. Well, we can't divide by tangent. Tangent is a function, it's not a number. So we have to do the opposite of tangent, which is the inverse tangent. So x is left if we take the inverse tangent. And we get inverse tangent of 1.66667. There we go. So the inverse tangent is something I also a lot of the times call the second tangent. So second sine, second cosine, second tangent. Because when you look on the calculator, it's always right above sine, cosine, and tangent. So you have to hit the second button to get this negative 1. Negative 1 means inverse. Negative 1. And so if you take the inverse tangent of 1.66666666667, you get an angle measurement of 59.04 degrees.